You asked for it. You got it. What's in my camera bag? I appreciate the comment on my previous video. So we're gonna dive right in into what's in my camera bag these days. So of course, the real answer is it depends. Depends on what I'm shooting, depends on the subject, the event, the occasion, etc. But I do have a shoot planned tomorrow at the time of making this video. I got something planned for tomorrow. So I'm going to show you what I got packed up for this event that I'm shooting. So let's begin. Start unpacking here. So in mystery case number one, we have a Rode microphone, on-camera microphone. This is the NTG. We're going to come back to this. I'm going to set it aside. So here we go. First camera. This was my previous video. This is the Canon R with the RF 28 to 70 lens. Okay, this is going to be the main camera that I'm using to shoot this event tomorrow. Just walking around doing group photos, action shots, using that 28 to 70. All right, so it gets better. This is going to be a very dark event. I already know what the lighting situation is going to be like. Not going to be a lot of available ambient light. So I'm going to need a flash, but not just any flash. We have the Canon Speedlight EL1. This Speedlight is no joke. It is no toy. It is no slouch. This is a really nice flash. So you got the Speedlight EL1 on top of the Canon R with the RF 28 to 70. Can it get any heavier than this? Well, yes, but oh yeah, and the battery grip, right? So here's going to be my main weapon of choice for tomorrow for probably about, I'm going to say at least 60% of the event. This is going to be my go-to weapon of choice right here. I'm also going to probably throw on, we got these nice little modifiers for the flash. It's going to be indoors, so I might want to put on a little color to warm things up. And then another one to diffuse the flash even more to get nice, soft pleasing, flattering light for those group shots, action shots, etc. All right, so here we go. That's number one. So let me keep going here. But wait, there's more. So we have mystery camera case number two. You're going to be like, what? What a random combination all right here we are weapon number two we got the sony a7s3 with a tamron 17 to 28 lens you might be wondering why would i combine this with the canon camera so there's two purposes for this that i'm going to be using it for so one we're going to bring back the Rode video mic here. So, of course, the Sony A7S III is phenomenal at video. So, I'm not just taking photos at this event, but I anticipate also taking video and it's switching back and forth. So, I'm going to have my hands full and be running around like a crazy person. It's just me documenting this event. So... To take some video, that's going to be the A7S III. Got the microphone up top. Nice, lightweight, wide zoom, the 17 to 28 Tamron. Okay, so that's that. 
but we're not even done yet. So, here's next in my bag. We got the Joby mini tripod here. I love this thing. So, I got this. Hook it up to the Sony. And you can do a couple things with this. Um, I, I definitely like to just leave it on because you never know exactly how or when you're going to need it. Um, I mean, actually... I'm not, not that I'm going to be doing any vlogging tomorrow at this event, but this is actually an awesome vlog setup. Exactly this. The Joby mini tripod, the Sony a7S III, this Tamron 17-28, the Rode VideoMic NTG. Love this setup for vlogging, okay? But not going to be vlogging tomorrow, but I'll be <laughs> facing the camera the other direction out at other people taking some video, walking around. You can still always use the Joby mini tripod as a little bit of a extra grip and stabilizer. Or I can actually, you know, bend it out, put it down on a on the stage where there's going to be some performances, uh, you know, put it down on a table or you know, anything like that, wrap it around something like, like I do occasionally. So super versatile, love it. So this is one setup. And I'm not done yet. So here we go. So here, you're going to think I'm crazy for this. This is the 70 to 300 millimeter Tamron lens. Is this the greatest zoom lens in the world? No, it's not. But it's pretty solid, especially up to 300. So here's where, here's where you're just going to think I'm absolutely crazy and have lost my mind. So... Uh, we're <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna switch things out here. We're gonna. Whew. Okay, you're gonna think I'm absolutely crazy for this. So, I would use the 17 to 28 Tamron for video, primarily. I mean, it's it's also a great photo lens. But here's the thing: this 70 to 300. I can anticipate actually using this to take photos, even though the Sony a7S III only takes 12 megapixel photos, it still takes pretty darn good photos in low light situations, which is exactly what I'm going to be in tomorrow night for this shoot. And I don't know, I may, you know, I may be trying to catch this performance from across the room. That might be the only real way that I can capture the full stage instead of like being up close and, you know, trying to shoot from like this down low side angle situation. So I got the 70 to 300 millimeter on the a7S III to get those action shots of this performance up on the stage. Yes, it's only 12 megapixel photos, but we really only need these photos for social media and stuff like that afterwards. And it will be in, uh, these photos will be in print also, but they're going to be, you know, we're talking like magazine size, like not even full page, like quarter page photos, something like that. So uh, it doesn't have to be super high resolution uh, for uh, any of these photos that I'm capturing. They just need to look good, right? I just have to capture the action, good exposure, all that stuff, good angles. So that's why I'm bringing this lens for this camera um as far like i said as far as zooms go you know could i have a higher quality zoom yes for a lot more money this is a pre actually a pretty economical lens for this for this length for this uh zoom length uh the alternative could have been like yeah you know get i think there's a 400 millimeter rf lens prime that i could have gotten for the uh the canon r here but that's ugh many many thousands of dollars so uh, we're gonna hold off on that purchase so we're gonna just make do with this guy for now so let's keep going we got just a couple things left here so i did mention that i'm gonna be filming and trying to record a performance a musical performance okay so i also have my handy zoom h6 recorder here it literally says handy recorder can't make this stuff up so i'll most likely just like put this up on the stage and record the action meanwhile i can still be walking around 
and I will have this uh, the the Rode microphone recording audio at all times, and that way I can always sync up the audio later in post. And one more thing, I may not really need it for this shoot, but I actually have a couple of these. So it's uh, I got I got some of these Sennheiser. Uh, it's the G4 lav mics. All right, just like the little clip-ons. They actually sound really good. I've got, like I said, I've got two pairs. And actually what I love is that you can plug these, you can plug these into this, into the, the Zoom recorder, which is really cool. And I've done that before where I've got two people in front of the camera, just plug it right into here. We're on location. It's awesome. Uh, one weird little thing about these Sennheiser wireless microphones is the the cords, like the the wires. It's just like you, you get so much swishy noise uh, just from movement. So you have to be really careful, have really good mic technique, and and make sure that the cords are. I mean, you might sometimes even want to tape them down if it's really that mission critical to not get any external like swishy movement noise from your clothes or whatever. Make sure you don't have these you know, this big extra slack of the, the wire, like hanging out of your pocket or whatever. So that is the one uh, potential downside. I mean, it's, you have to use good technique and everything, regardless of what brand or what, you know, how much you pay for uh, these types of wireless microphones, but still just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, but they, but they do sound really good, right? If you don't get any of this extra noise thrown into the mix, they do sound really good uh, as far as wireless microphones go. Um, and speaking of audio, I definitely will not need it for this, uh, for this shoot, but I do have a, a Shups Super Cardioid microphone that is phenomenal for things like indoor dialogue recording. Um, I'm, no way would I ever bring it to this type of event. It's just, it's not necessary. There's no, there's no use or need for it really. Um, but I've done some really high-end recordings with that Shups microphone, and it is not a cheap microphone either. Um, but of course, it sounds good. It's super, just super accurate, uh, just wonderful, wonderful sound coming on out of that thing. But I will not need it whatsoever for this shoot. So that's about it. So we got the to recap. We got the Canon. We got the the beast, the the behemoth, right here. Got the Canon set up. Got the Sony situation right here. We got a little bit of a little bit of audio with the zoom. Extra lens. And that's what's in my camera bag. Thanks for watching. Yeah.